Alaska Insight is supported in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by viewers just like you. Thank you. BP, one of the biggest and longest operating oil companies in Alaska, is now leaving the state. The company has sold its assets to Hillcorp, a much smaller operator that is known for buying older oil and gas fields and streamlining operations. What does it mean for Alaska's resource extraction future now that one of the industry leaders is out? We'll take a look at BP's exit plan tonight on Alaska Insight. As one of the first oil companies to invest in Alaska, BP has been a part of the state's economy for 60 years. But after decades as a leader in Prudhoe Bay, the company struck a $5.6 billion deal to sell their Alaska assets to Hillcorp Alaska. Alaska Public Media's Zakia McCummings has this story about the major role BP played in making Alaska an oil-rich state. BP is leaving Alaska. After more than 60 years as one of the largest oil companies in the state, BP announced in August it will sell its Alaska assets to Texas-based company Hillcorp. The company began explorations in Alaska in 1959, but for years, BP had little success with exploration, coming up short with dry wells in Prudhoe Bay. Then in 1967, Arco and Humble Oil struck oil. BP confirmed the discovery the following year by drilling a successful well of their own. Tim Bradner is the editor of the Alaska Economic Report and worked for BP from 1970 to 1985. He says that as the first major oil company to explore the North Slope, BP laid the foundation for the eventual discovery of oil. Even though Arco and Humble drilled the discovery well, BP was um, uh, quickly drilled the second well, which helped kind of confirm the significance of the discovery. So I think, to begin, for one thing, you can credit BP with having laid the groundwork for the oil wealth that Alaska has enjoyed. BP's activities soon increased. In 1975, the company helped build the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, an $8 billion undertaking that was the largest privately funded construction project in the world. Two years later, they started oil production in Prudhoe Bay. The company was interested next in offshore exploration. Roger Herrera was a geologist and lobbyist for BP at that time. It's very clearly is that Alaska has hardly been touched for its true potential for oil and gas. This true potential is further illustrated by the vast area of outer continental shelf, uh, all of most of which has oil and gas potential, which lies offshore Alaska. BP was all in, eventually acquiring Arco in 2000. Prudhoe Bay is now managed through a partnership with ConocoPhillips and Exxon. But over the last five years, BP has been selling off its Alaska assets. Bradner says the news of BP's $5.6 billion deal with Hillcorp isn't a surprise to those who keep a close eye on the industry. As oil fields mature, the, uh, the large companies that own or maybe developed it in the beginning, uh, you know, they, they at some point they transfer the asset to a... Uh, a smaller company that might be more aggressive or might have different ideas as to how to how to work it. It's the end of an era for Prudhoe Bay and the beginning of another as Hillcorp takes over BP's assets on the North Slope. In Anchorage, I'm Zakia McCummings. Good evening, BP, ConocoPhillips, Exxon. The names are synonymous with Alaska's oil industry, but one of the big three is leaving the state now. Here to discuss what this means for the future is Larry Persley. Larry is a former federal pipeline coordinator for Alaska LNG and also a former deputy commissioner of the Department of Revenue. Hi, Larry. Hi. Thanks for being here. Hope I have some answers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. Also with us this evening is Bill Pop. Bill is the CEO and executive director of the Alaska Economic Development Corporation. Hi, Bill. Good evening. Thanks for being here. And uh, in the interest of full disclosure, Bill is a member of Alaska Public Media's Board of Directors. So we want to let the public know about that. 
let's start with what we know about the deal so far. $5.6 billion sale to Texas-based company Hillcorp. So, Larry, what does that mean? What did Hillcorp actually purchase? Well, they bought BP's interests and leases. They bought BP's share in the physical assets of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, Prudhoe Bay, Point Towson. But what Hillcorp really bought, what really determined that $5.6 billion is how much oil is not just in the ground, but how much oil Hillcorp believes they can get out of the ground and at what price and at what profit. The 5.6 is for oil, not old pieces of steel. Mm -hmm. Bill, as someone who watches economic trends, what does this sale say? Is it uh, BP's bargain bin sell-off or is it a smart, robust investment for the future for Hillcorp? I think it's more the latter, um, and but it serves both companies' purposes. BP is changing its focus to other parts of the world. This is not an unexpected change. This happens in older legacy fields around the world where a major will come in and find a major discovery of oil, develop it, harvest, and then ultimately sell it off to a smaller company that's more nimble, that has other ideas about the field, that then makes significant new investments that the legacy company probably wasn't really interested in in its broader portfolio. So I think this is a win-win for both companies. This allows Hillcorp to move up substantially in the size of its assets and its developable oil. And I think this allows BP uh, a, significant, a significant chunk of cash that uh, they've already made very clear they want to invest in other parts of the world. You mentioned uh, Hillcorp being a more nimble company. They're mm -hmm. smaller. So what do we know about how different these two operators are? BP is a publicly traded corporation, uh, Hillcorp is privately held. What does this mean? How does this make the two companies different? Well, Hillcorp has a business model that is uh, less, uh, less top-heavy with labor in terms of direct employment. They tend to use contractors more. Uh, we have clear examples of their business model right here in Alaska in Cook Inlet, where they took over the legacy Chevron assets that Chevron had inherited from Unical, when uh, they bought out Unical globally and it really didn't fit their portfolio and they almost immediately put it up for sale. And Hillcorp picked up Cook Inlet and over the course of several years made some significant new investments, doubled production in Cook Inlet uh, of, of crude oil and brought on significant new uh, supplies of natural gas, especially when they took over the marathon assets in Cook Inlet and saw significant new levels of economic activity on the Kenai Peninsula from the new contractors that they helped to bring online as well as the existing contractors and overall saw a bit of a renaissance um, in the Cook Inlet region. Nowhere near what it used to be in hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil but definitely taking it up into the high teens and low twenties uh, in terms of uh, daily production. You know, for BP, this is not, you know, these are the types of, of, of production levels that really aren't a good fit for a multinational major, um, BP, ExxonMobil, um, other ENI, other, uh, well, excuse me, not ENI, but other companies that are, are significant players on the global scene, their strategies are starting to shift in ways that are starting to try and take more advantage of the fracking revolution, uh, in the lower 48 in particular. And they're starting to shift away from these more expensive fields uh, in terms of, for their, their point of view, more expensive in, in terms of the return and uh, potential on the money that they are investing. Larry, pick up that thread. Uh, BP, much yeah. larger, publicly traded. Well, uh, Hill but Corp, also you look company. at BP has 1,600 employees in Alaska, and it takes a, not just those 1,600, there's a lot of management attention in Houston and London that is spent on Alaska, and we now know that it was worth $5.6 billion. So I think BP says, I can take that $5 billion and the management time at the higher levels I was spending on Alaska for 74,000 barrels a day and declining, I can invest that somewhere else, better returns, a, a growing number rather than a declining number. So it's just from a business perspective, it, it just makes sense. How long is it going to take to actually get this deal done? sometime next year they're saying there, there'll be some regulatory approvals state federal required uh, my guess is there may still be some details they need to resolve certainly Hillcorp's going to have to look at BP's 1600 employees their contractors the organization chart how they get something done day to day and figure out how do they want to structure it who do they want to keep what positions do they want so I believe they've been saying sometime early next year is what they would hope 
BP has managed the Prudhoe Bay uh, operation on behalf of all the partners up there for about 20 years now. Do we have any clarity yet as to what this will mean going forward? Have, have you heard that that will continue, that Hillcorp will be the new uh, operator of the field on behalf of everyone, or has that not been determined yet? Anybody have any insight about that? I think the expectation is Hillcorp will be, but I haven't seen an official announcement that says Hillcorp's going to be the operator. I guess the question is, if not Hillcorp, who? I would doubt Exxon wants to, and Conoco's pretty busy with Caparic and Alpine and NPRA, so I think the expectation is Hillcorp. But that's something where Hillcorp and Exxon and Conoco, the major partners, they're going to have to talk among themselves. Bill, a lot of North Slope workers live in Anchorage. Mm -hmm. uh, BP has been selling off assets for a few years now. Have, have you seen that rippling out at all in the Anchorage economy? You know, it's been kind of hard to tell in the sense that some of those asset uh, sales have taken place before the recession kicked in, before the bottom fell out of the price of a barrel of oil, and some of them have taken place after that. Um, you know, overall, I think that we've seen, you know, some very significant employment numbers before the recession, um, all-time record peaks in employment in North Slope jobs. Um, but since then, we've seen a, a fairly significant retrenchment. Um, we've got about 2,700 jobs in Anchorage right now that are attributed to oil and gas employment that's based here in Anchorage, the headquarters jobs, if you will. That's down fairly substantially, uh, almost 1,000 jobs that we've seen. Um, in terms of losses from the previous peak. And overall statewide, we're just now approaching the 10,000 mark when we were up in the 14,000 range in terms of total oil and gas employment. So it's kind of hard to ferret that out, you know, as to, you know, this particular asset sale meant this ma many less or more jobs, um, given what's been going on with the, the overall state of the oil market in Alaska. Larry, as someone who's worked for both the federal and state government, how much involvement will, will there be with uh, either federal or state in, in this actual deal? Are they just at a regulatory distance? Will they be involved at all well, in, 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 in kind of having oversight over I mean, they'll be involved. It. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is involved on the tariffs for the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, where each company has its, its, own, um, uh, its own tariff filings, its own ownership stake. There will be land leases that have to be transferred. There will be, I suppose, air quality permits and the rest. But I don't think it's going to achieve the level 20 years ago when BP took over ARCO and antitrust issues got involved. And the, the state really leveraged some concessions as part of that merger. I don't see any antitrust issues here. So I think, yes, state and federal will be involved, but a much lower level than we saw 20 years ago with the merger up on the slope. But that's also something that's going to take some time, which is another reason why they talk next year. How has uh, Alaska's relationship, BP's relationship with Alaska, sort of evolved over the course of its 60-year history? It's a question for both of you. Well, I think BP's been a strong player in the state of Alaska for six decades. Um, they've had a lot to do with the success of the oil patch in the state of Alaska. Uh, they've made massive investments in our state and they've generated massive returns for our state treasury and for our economy. And they've been a big part of our community. I mean, I know a lot of folks at BP who are friends and neighbors and who I'm going to really miss if they leave the state um, with BP. Um, and that's going to be a little bittersweet. This is, a, this is a fairly significant change, but it's not an unexpected change. I want to reinforce that we see this happen in, in other oil fields all around the world where large companies hand off to smaller companies an asset that they've developed for a while. I think we've been lucky in the fact that BP has been with us for six decades. I mean, that is a little unusual in, in that mm -hmm. particular model. And so I think we're going to have to, you know, unfortunately say goodbye to some of our friends, but in the same hand, we're going to be welcoming new friends that are going to be coming on board with uh, Hill Corp coming in, in a stronger presence in our state. And then we're going to see a lot of transition of BP employees to Hill Corp and to other companies. Mm -hmm. Larry. Yeah, I think the three majors we have now, BP, Conoco, Exxon, um, Arco before that, you know, if you go back decades, Unical, the, the majors have been good corporate citizens in terms of 
support in the university, gets, has gotten a lot of money from BP. BP runs the Teacher of the Year program, Conoco, um, and they all, um, a lot of their employees volunteer in the community, serve on board. So it's not that Hillcorp's going to shut that off. They're going to do it different, however they decide. I think it's unsettling. The change is unsettling to Alaskans. Are they going to write the same checks that BP did? Will their employees volunteer on my boards? And I think given the political and budget, ter budget turmoil in Alaska, we're sort of overloaded on uncertainty at the moment. And this just adds to it, so I think it's making people anxious. I think we're seeing the handoff of BP's stewardship role in our state's economy being handed off to Hillcorp, and we just have to see how they're going to embrace that role as a steward of the state's economy. Well, I think it's interesting. Uh, both of you were on Talk of Alaska with me earlier this week, and, and Bill, you mentioned that BP actually has a, a chair on the board of directors for <laughs> the Alaska Economic Anchorage, or Anchorage Economic. Economic Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. How unusual is that? It's not unusual. We see um, BP, ConocoPhillips, ExxonMobil, other companies in all different sectors of the economy taking um, stewardship roles and direct involvement roles in holding seats on any number of nonprofit boards in our community and across the state. And it's part of their involvement in the community that serves their, their company and their employees and their reciprocal role in being part of the process that keeps Alaska a great place to live and work and play. And I, it's, it's not unusual at all. Do you anticipate that Hillcorp might take that seat now? Well, that's a discussion that I don't really have any good answers on yet because that's a discussion for my board of directors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hillcorp started in Alaska in Cook Inlet in uh, about 2012. They've had some problems, a uh, pipeline leak in December of 2016 that continued for nearly five months, and also a cleaning incident on the North Slope um, that was nearly fatal for three workers. After that incident, the Alaska Oil and Gas Conservation Commission wrote that Hillcorp has a significant history of non-compliance with AOGA regulations. Do you think, what, what have, what's changed in that time? Have they tightened up their operations here to address these concerns? Larry, what do you know about this? Well, I'd say they better have, and I would expect their partners on the slope with Conoco and Exxon will be discussing that with them and sharing the same concerns regulators have. You know, did Hillcorp take some things for granted? Were they lax here? I don't know. I haven't read the files. I um, would expect the legislature will probably hold some hearings. Not that they have jurisdiction to stop it or bless it, but they'll want to know what is the company's commitment and what have they, they learned. Alaska is a different environment to work in, and I'd like to think Hillcorp has learned that and will do a good job going forward, but... Uh, I don't, this is not a prediction, accidents happen. Certainly BP with the Gulf, um, Exxon with the Exxon Valdez. The question is, how often do they happen and what's your response when they do happen? Are you prepared to deal with it? Uh, a lot of questions that I've had from the public uh, relate to the bonding that's required for taking care of if there's an accident, if there's a spill or a well blowout, or at the end of a of, uh, of particular area's production, the restoration that has to happen to take all that infrastructure out. Have you seen any details about uh, how that might transfer to Hillcorp? And is Hillcorp large enough to take on this liability? Depends how bad the accident is. <laughs> um, you know, all the leases require, when you're done with Prudhoe, you got to clean it up. When you're done with Point Thompson, you got to clean it up. When you're done in Cook Inlet, you got to clean it up. I would expect, as BP through the TAPS Trans Alaska Oil Pipeline Terrace, has been in essence pre collecting some money for the dismantling and restoration of the pipeline route, that that is an issue that was discussed with the two companies and would be in the contract, which of course I haven't seen. But yeah, I think that is Alaskan's concern. is. If there's an accident, how deep are your pockets? Mm -hmm. How much insurance do you have? I think Bill has some history in Cook Inlet and in the right. issue of the platforms. You know, when I worked for the Kenai Peninsula Borough, one of the issues was removal and remediation of the platforms that are in Cook Inlet. And ultimately, if a company that has, is the current operator and owner of a platform were to say go bankrupt, 
um, there was a view at that time that the, it would then the state would then turn to the previous owner um, and look at that owner for the cost of removal and remediation. So, um, you know, the issues that are, are related to infrastructure removal and remediation and to those kinds of responses are something that, you know, it, the state is going to be probably looking at in terms of how the deal is structured in the deal approval process and are probably going to be looking at that to see that the lines of, of responsibility are clearly defined. And I think regulators will look at it at the Department of Natural Resources, which deals with state land leases. I expect the legislature will look at it, again, not to block it, but just saying, hey, we're the elected officials. Can you come testify and explain how you're going to deal with this? What's your structure? What's your plan? So it's possible that BP may still be involved yes. at some point in the future as far as remediation and, That'd and be my dismantling. Expectation. Again, dependent on how the deal is structured. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we don't know yet because the documents in detail through the regulatory process have not gone into the public arena yet. And, you know, those that are disclosable, there will be portions of the deal that are, are proprietary in nature, and then there'll be portions of the deal that are subject to regula reg uh, regulation and oversight by the federal government and by the state government. This is a private company. It's not uh, publicly traded. There's mm -hmm. Uh, not the same level of disclosure in reporting. What should Alaskans expect going forward? This Hillcorp is also a company that's known for not wanting to comment very often, so it's hard to get interviews with them. What should Alaskans expect in this new era now with a private company being a much bigger player in the North Slope? Uh, I guess I would say Alaskans who, who, Alaskans who want more information and feel the industry's hiding something will get more frustrated because it's a private company and they don't have to share financials. Uh, BP just um, end of July held a quarterly briefing on their results and at that quarterly briefing at the end of July they said hey we plan to divest sell off another 10 billion dollars in assets before the end of 2020. You're not going to get those kind of announcements signals from Hillcorp. So I think Alaskans will get frustrated but I think the bigger question will be, uh, are they good corporate citizen? Do they have any accidents? What's their hiring practice? How do they treat contractors and employees? If you do a good job on all that, people will be more understanding of the fact that you're private and you don't have to tell me what's in your checkbook. Mm -hmm. If they have problems there, the lack of information, I think, will just get more frustrating. Bill, Hillcorp, may, they're known for being a leaner operation. That's how they make their money they will likely use more contractors than direct employees. What do you think uh, that means for the job market and wages for those contractors? Well, I think that, you know, one of the, and, and this is a nationwide trend of using contractors, um, and even the majors are starting to do that more aggressively. Um, it's gonna be some downward pressure on the top end uh, range of the wages that are being paid in, in the oil industry. Um, it's still going to be really good paying jobs um, in the contractor side of things. And in all likelihood, I think we're going to see a period of transition between BP ownership and Hillcorp ownership. There's going to be some decisions made. There are going to be BP employees, current BP employees, who are going to leave with BP to other parts of the world. Um, that's a talent loss for the state in a very competitive marketplace. Um, we're going to have a portion of the BP workforce that is going to land with Hillcorp, that Hillcorp is going to want to uh, make offers to and preserve within their company. There are going to be other oil and gas companies uh, pursuing um, this labor pool also. There, it, it's going to be a competition for this workforce. Depending, and, you know, the level of that competition is going to depend on the skills that you have to offer. But nationwide, there is a bit of a talent shortage in the oil and gas industry because there was a lot of folks who retired out during the recession, the national recession. A lot of folks who said, this isn't the industry for me, and they moved to a new industry sector. So right now, this labor pool that's suddenly potentially in play in terms of BP's workforce is going to be of interest to the oil and gas industry and all the players involved there, but will also be of interest to other industry sectors because there are accountants, there are lawyers, there are communication specialists, there are lo logistics team specialists, all of whom are of interest to any number of companies in the state. In just about 30 seconds or so, uh, BP was known as being a very philanthropic um, uh, corporate citizen in Alaska, spending three to four million dollars per year. 
um, or donating, I should say, three to four million dollars a year to local organizations and nonprofits. What do you think we can expect, or should we have any expectations about how Hillcorp may step into that role in Alaska? I think we're going to have to see how that plays out. I mean, Hillcorp is a different company with a different company philosophy and a different company structure, and they are going to be making their own decisions on those kinds of charitable contributions and and contributions to other nonprofit type organizations. The thing of it is is that I think that they have just taken on a role of significant stewardship within our state's economy and our communities. I think that that baton is being handed off to them by BP. I think that they recognize that and I think that to the degree that it fits within what they want to accomplish in the state, they are also going to be good community partners. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much to my guests, Larry Persley and Bill Pop, for joining me this evening. Thank you. Good to be here. As you've heard this evening, BP leaving Alaska will be a big change for the oil industry itself, but most Alaskans may not see much difference in the state's relationship with the operators of Prudhoe Bay. Environmentalists are concerned that Hillcorp will cut corners to make a profit, citing worker safety incidents and past spills. Hillcorp acknowledges errors, but officials say they are committed to working with regulators to maintain safe operations. As the company takes the reins from BP, Alaskans will be watching to see what kind of corporate citizen Hillcorp will become. You can watch past episodes of Alaska Insight on our website, alaskapublic.org slash alaskainsight. We'll be back next Friday, right after Washington week. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Lori Townsend. Good night. <music>